Section 1, 1, example 5. So we have 2 over x plus 3 is less than 1 over x plus 1. And again, I really want to multiply by x plus 3 and x plus 1 to clear the denominator. But again, we have that issue. We don't know if x is positive or negative, so do, don't multiply. I want to multiply so bad, but we're not going to do it. Um, if it were an equation, that's allowed. But because of the inequality and that positive-negative issue, we are going to make one-sided zero instead. So we're just going to go ahead and subtract 1 over x plus 1, as weird as that is. That's going to make the right side zero. So we have 2 over x plus 3 minus 1 over x plus 1 is less than zero. So yay, one side is zero. That's our goal. So we're going to go ahead and find a common denominator, and then we can start factoring. So I'll multiply the first one by x plus 1, x plus 1, right? We multiply top and bottom. We'll multiply the second one by x plus 3 and x plus 3. And now they'll both have a common denominator of x plus 1 times x plus 3. So for the first one, we're going to get 2x plus 2 over x plus 1, x plus 3, and then we'll get minus x minus 3. I'm going to distribute that negative. Actually, let's just do x plus 3, and then we'll distribute the negative in the next step. All over x plus 1, x plus 3, less than 0. So we're going to go ahead and combine them. So my first fraction is 2x plus 2. My second one, because of the subtraction, will be minus x minus 3. And then they have a common denominator of x plus 1, x plus 3. Um, we'll go ahead and combine like terms, and then we can do the same thing we've been doing. So 2x minus x gives me x. Um, 2 minus 3 gives me minus 1, so x minus 1 on top. And then we have x plus 1 and x plus 3, all less than 0. So we can go ahead and find those intervals, um, those endpoints and intervals. So the numerator gives me a 1. x minus 1 equals 0. It gives me a 1. Um, x plus 1 equals 0 gives me a negative 1. And since it's in the denominator, x can't be negative 1 because the denominator can't be 0. So that's just a nice reminder. Even if endpoints are included, anything from the denominator is not. And then x plus 3 equals 0 gives me negative 3. And then again, since it's in the denominator, x can't be negative 3. So I'm just going to mark it as a reminder that it's not in the domain. Right? Denominators can never be 0. So it looks like we're going to have four intervals this time. We have negative infinity to negative 3. We have negative 3 to negative 1, negative 1 to 1, and 1 to infinity. Since this is our fifth uh, example, maybe you want to try the test intervals without me. I always encourage you to give it a try. Um, even if you make a mistake, you're learning from making those mistakes. And then you can come back and watch the video with me. But if you want to give it a try with me, I'm going to go ahead and set up the table. We're going to plug into each factor. x minus 1, x plus 1, x plus 3, and then we'll go ahead and combine them to figure out the positive negative signs. So I'm going to make a nice little table. Yeah, we should have four columns for four intervals. And we'll pick some test values. So negative infinity to negative 3, I'm going to pick negative 10. Why not? You can pick any number you want, as long as it's less than negative 3. So we're going to plug into each one. Negative 10 minus 1 is negative 11, but again, I only care that it's negative. So yes, you can use a calculator, and you might be using a calculator, but I want you to get to a point where you're doing this in your head, because we don't care about the actual number. Um, negative 10 plus 1 
Since 10 is bigger, it'll stay negative, so negative. And then negative 10 plus 3 is still negative. And if you chose negative 4, you'd get the same signs, right? The numbers themselves are different, but the sign should be the same. So two of those negatives cancel out. That's positive. And then the third negative makes this interval negative. Um, negative 3 to negative 1, I like negative 2. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative, again, because 2 is bigger than 1, so it'll stay negative. And then negative 2 plus 3 will become positive. So negatives cancel out, and this interval is positive. Um, negative 1 to 1, I like 0. 0 is always an easy choice. So 0 minus 1 is minus negative. 0 plus 1 is positive. 0 plus 3 is positive. So we'll get a negative interval. And then for our final interval, anything bigger than 1. So 2, 3, 4, 5, right? I'll choose 5. Why not? 5 minus 1 is positive. 5 plus 1 is positive. And 5 plus 3 is positive, right? We're just plugging in the test values for x. And so we get a positive interval. And then what do we want here? We want less than 0. So we want negative intervals. And then no endpoints. So negative 3 and negative 1 were never going to be included for any reason, but we also know 1 is not included because there's no or equal sign. So I'm going to shade the first interval and the third interval. So we have negative infinity to negative 3, and we have negative 1 to 1 as our solution. And so any number in either of these intervals would be a solution to this inequality. So let me know if you have questions. Um, I'm here to help.